In Onshape, you can design in context as part of top-down design. Designing in context is how you can design features in parts in part studios using the other components in the assembly as references. One way to do that is by using this icon to create a part studio in context. Now, one thing to note, in this particular assembly, I only have one component. Before you click on this icon, you want to make sure that you have the components visible that you want to use in context. And if you have components with degrees of freedom, you want to make sure that the components are positioned the way that you want to design against them, like if you have a mechanism. So anyhow, I'm going to click on this icon to create the part studio in context. And then you get a dialog box where you're, you are prompted to either select the origin of the assembly or a make connector in order to position this new part studio. I'm just going to pick the origin right out of the feature list. Then I can hit the check mark. And now we are inside of a part studio. I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut P to turn off the display of my datum planes. But now you can see in this transparent mode, the outline of the components from the assembly that were visible. Again, I only have one component in the assembly, so I'm seeing just this one. And now I can use this for designing new features in my parts in the part studio. So for example, I need to create a holder for this particular motor. And so I'm going to grab this surface to use as a reference. And then I'm just going to click on the extrude button. And here I get the dialog box and the preview of the depth of my extrude. And I don't want it anywhere near that deep. Let me change this to a value of five. And I'm happy with this as the first feature in my new part. So I will hit the check mark. And if you take a look in my feature list, here we have the extrude that I just created. And there is an arrow next to it that's highlighted in that yellowish orange color. And that indicates that this was created in context. If we take a look up at the top of the screen, let me start out by making this a little bit wider. Here we have the name of the context and the source assembly that it was created in. I'm going to use the three dots button to bring open a menu from which I can choose the rename command. And I'm going to call this my motor assembly. That is a much better description of the context that I am using here. And so you can actually have multiple contexts defined for your part studios that you are working on. And here's the other choice for none, but I'll show something about that in a moment. So anyhow, here I have the part that was created. I'm going to rename this and I'll right click on it and choose rename. And I will call this my motor holder base. And in reality, I would design a whole bunch more features in here now, but one feature is good enough to start off with. Let me rename this part studio. I'm going to call it the motor part studio. And I can get rid of the number on the end. Okay, so let's say that I'm done designing in here for now. This particular component does not appear in the assembly, even though the part studio was created in context. It just provides me references that I can design around. And so in order to get it into the assembly, now I will click on this button that says insert and go to assembly. So I will click on it and then it opens up this dialog box where you can select the parts from the part studio that you want to insert. Maybe you have multiple parts in here. You can also insert surfaces and sketches from the part studio into the assembly. But again, I only have this one part, so I'm going to insert it. I'll hit the check mark. And actually, let me jump back over to the part studio. I meant to change the color because right now it is blending into the same color as a bunch of the 
geometry in the motor itself. So I'll jump over to the Motor Studio. And when I jump over here, you'll notice that now I'm only seeing that one part. If I wanna see the context, I can go to the drop down list and change it from none to that motor assembly context that I created. And again, I came back over here because I wanted to change the color. So let's right click on it and choose edit appearance. And I'm gonna make it just something that looks a little bit different. That one is good. So I'll hit the check mark. Let me go back to the assembly using that button. And so now you can see that in my assembly, I have the original part that I placed the motor. And then here is the new one that I created in context. And it's got the icon that shows that it has degrees of freedom. So I can start adding make connectors or after I define some more components, I can group them to the base component which is uh, fixed in the assembly so that that way this one doesn't have any degrees of freedom, but it also has this arrow. And when I hover over the arrow, it says motor assembly. So it's showing me that this has the external references. It has that context reference to the motor assembly itself. So again, that's how that's one way that you could use this method of designing in context by creating the part studio in context. It really is neat stuff. Just a, a little bit of my commentary about this. You know, I'm a big fan of top-down design. I wrote a book on top-down design for Creo Parametric, and I really like how the people at Onshape have just rethought and reinvented the process of doing top-down design based on everything that people have learned since parametric modeling was developed in the late 1980s. So anyhow, there you have it, and I will have more videos on using top-down design in Onshape.